first event at the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome was the men's sprint. Australia's Matthew Glatzer broke the Commonwealth Games record in qualifying. Here he is again in first round action. Which Glatzer at the front here, the 23 year old, former world junior sprint champion. And he's also been a world team sprint champion at elite level in 2012. He was partnering Sunderland and Perkins on that occasion. Matt Crampton, well, he's been around quite some time. The 28-year-old comes from Lancashire. And uh, he's knocked on the door several times. But his only world championship medal came with a bronze in the world team sprint champs back in 2011. Like Glatzer is fully aware of his opponent here, and he's uh, actually tapping the early rhythm out here uh, quite quickly. There's no finessing or standing still here, and it's Glatzer still leading. Belt this time. Rules are very simple here. Just beat your opponent. Glatzer now has to stay inside that uh, sprinter's channel. Crampton can only come round him, and that's a big ask. He's not going to get past Glatzer. Glatzer will be the first one to go through to the borders. That's how he finishes. Matthew Glatzer of Australia winning very comfortably there. Next on for the track, Australia versus Trinidad. Peter Lewis is wanting to lead this out. Well, Trinidad won the gold medal in 1966 for this event with Roger Gibbon. That was on the National Stadium there in Kingston, a big open concrete track. Nothing like this one now then. Can he close up? Giving himself a lot of work to do here, Philip of Trinidad. Lewis, very strong at the front. He's not going to do it, is he? It was a good, valiant effort, but he left it too late, didn't he? That was a really good effort. Uh, yeah, he got his timing a little bit wrong there. It looked like he sat up a little bit, and then he went again down the back straight. It's uh, just a fraction too late. And here is Philip Hines. So this is the last chance for England to place a rider into the quarterfinals at the first attempt. It looks like Philip Hines wants to take the back. That's why he's riding so slow. He wants the Australian to come past him. Or Malaysian, sorry, or Wang. He wants to ride it from, they both want to ride it from the back. Yeah, from that angle there, the colours, it's a bit misleading. It's only when you see the black, then as the uh, right arm comes into view. Are we going to be treated to a standstill? If we are, the commissaire or the referee will watch this. It'll be time. There is a time limit on it. Uh, my memory says it correct, and I think it's 10 seconds now. And then uh, they, they have to carry on. Well, we saw a little bit of a track stand there, and that actually takes a little bit out of the legs as well. Especially when they're so nervous, the muscles are so tense, trying to balance the bike there on such a steep bend. Yeah. So. We don't often see him doing it for too long. Ooh. Awang wanted the inside, and Awang has got it. Oh, this is a super sprint, isn't it? Threading the needle. Well, most athletes know what they want, and both of these riders want to ride there. Both are very similar in stature as well. Looks like Hines is going to lead it out. Here comes Awang in that incredible business-like style. Oh, yes, he's on fire. Awang then, the former world silver medalist, has ignited the burners, and I tell you what, Hines is not going to get level. A Wanga Malaysia goes through, and the news there is not one English sprinter has got through to the quarterfinals at the first attempt. They've got to come back to the repechage. There we are, we confirm the qualifiers through to the quarterfinals. They've all gone through by right. Glasgow got its first opportunity to see superstar cyclist Sir Bradley Wiggins in the men's 4,000 metres team pursuit. Now then, here they come up to the line. It's going to be the bell this time. This is definitely going to be the standard. Two more big squads to come. New, New Zealand and Australia. So they're going to really bury themselves now into the back straight. Yeah, well, that's Bradley on the back there. So he'll need to do a little bit of a sprint here. You can see he's just come under the wheel there. Here they come up to the line. There's the clock. It stopped on 3.59.249. So they got inside that four minutes right in the closing stages. England qualified well enough, but they were pipped to the post by Australia. They had a superb ride while New Zealand finished third.
first match in Pool B was expected to provide a straightforward victory for two-time gold medalist Australia up against Wales, whose coach was sacked recently and whose captain was ruled out through injury. We pick up the action in the first quarter. That is a set of obstruction. Yes. Skipper Susie Drains acknowledging the work that Melissa Hindman had done and really saying that without her input they probably wouldn't be sitting at the world ranking that they are. Yes. That is wing defence contact. Shot. Sweet shot from Lewis. Lisa Alexander having something to think about here. I think a bib or a little bit of paraphernalia has found its way onto the court. 